Welcome to TFR Let's Talk. I'm your host, Swapnil Bharatiya, and we have two guests with us, Lakshana Kesi, technology consultant, and Nirmal Adhikari, NFT Coding Hub Manager at Build Change. And you folks are also associated with the Linux Foundation's Isaac Simo Open Source Project. Before we get started, Nirmal, Lakshana, first of all, welcome to the show. Thank you, Swapnil. Thank you, Swapnil. It's nice to be here. Lakshana, can you just give us a quick background about yourself? I'm currently working as a technology consultant at Build Change, and I've been working in Build Change uh, since 2017 in uh, Nepal. And uh, I joined uh, because of uh, like my passion in technology for social impact. So I've been working on different projects related in the New Frontier Technology Division at Build Change. Uh, and I work at the intersection of technology and its application for the construction-related uh, projects at Build Change. Nirmal, can you please quickly talk about yourself? I'm working here as NFT Coding Hub Manager. Uh, we usually manage in NFT multiple projects, multiple uh, projects from multiple countries, multiple apps related to the Build Change and related to the Build Change donor and also third party and government, uh, depending upon which projects we are. We usually develop in-house code and also manage all the technology stuff here. Tell me a bit about Build Change. What, what do you folks do? What is it all about? So Build Change operates around the world. It's a nonprofit organization with a mission to uh, protect lives and livelihoods from disaster-induced housing destruction. And uh, yeah, it operates around the world and we have different uh, projects in uh, emerging nations. And our focus uh, is to enable housing, uh, disaster-resilient housing uh, around the world. When you say disaster in housing around the world, what exactly do you mean? Or if you want, you know, to just explain the scope of the Build Change project. We work by bringing together people, money and technology. And for example, we uh, spread awareness about the importance of safe construction, uh, of following safe construction guidelines for con during construction and also trying to bridge the gap in lack of technical assistance in remote areas. Uh, to homeowners so they are more aware of uh, safe housing construction practices. Build Change also provides training uh, and facilitates policy level changes in different institutions. Uh, so it works at different levels and, and we also try to uh, leverage technology and innovation to, to be able to achieve skill and uh, achieve more impact in uh, reaching our goal basically. Excellent. Uh, when you do talk about you know safe construction, um, are you talking about it in general, or you're talking about you know sometimes you know a lot of places uh, earthquakes are a big challenge, and sometimes the the construction is not up to that. So are you focusing on that particular area, or you're talking about construction in general? Uh, exactly, we are focusing on disaster prone regions in terms of earthquakes, typhoons, and uh, so on. And yeah, basically, it's not these disasters that. Uh, kill people, right, or damage, uh, create, cause the destruction of houses. It's because of substandard housing conditions. So our focus is to help mitigate the uh, challenges that lead to substandard housing conditions. These natural, uh, uh, you know, events, they are just like, you know, for, for a planet, it's just a normal activity, you know, it's the buildings uh, and how quickly we can either get out of those buildings, how quickly or how early we get information, hey, something is going to happen, or how well they are built. Uh, and as you were alluding to earlier that you are involved with a lot of policy making. Uh, so I think there are three aspects here. One is, of course, technology is there. You can build a lot of technologies that helps in early warning signals. Number two is that you have to work around policies, right? That policies, there are right policies. And number third is, which is more important and more uh, difficult is people or social. You can have technology in place. You can have policy in place. You can bring a horse to the water, but you cannot force it to drink water. So uh, can you talk about these three aspects? And if you look at build change, what are the aspects that you focus on? I think that you do focus on all three, but I want to hear from you. Build change as an organization focuses on all three because uh, each people, money and technology are important to change or transform the systems that regulate and finance and build um, uh, the houses. So basically we have to work at each step of the construction value chain, all the way from data collection uh, and gathering information from the field and requirements from the field, 
to all the way supervising and monitoring the construction and uh, getting uh, also getting the designs of uh, of um, disaster resilient houses and all the way to reporting so that we are aware uh, of the situation on the in the field so our focus uh, um, the organization focuses on each step of the construction value chain and ultimately our goal is to be able to leverage technology people and money in order to bring them all together and help transform the condition of substandard housing uh, our focus uh, today like uh, i mean uh, my colleague Nirmal and I, we work at, um, specifically in the technology component. So yeah, our focus is to be able to uh, support or bridge the gap in lack of engineers and technical professionals in the field. And by leveraging technology, trying to bridge that gap basically. We also help from awareness level to the post-disaster level, from pre-disaster, during disaster and post-disaster. So. In pre-disaster, we usually focus on awareness and the prevention type. We have a different apps in Nepal we call Surakshitgar in, in Indonesia and Philippines. We also have the app called Tibet Balai and Ruma Aman that usually focus on uh, the awareness part. So how they can be aware. So if, if disaster happens, what can they do? What are the main primary goals they can do to prevent from that disaster? And yeah, sure, of course, we also work on policy level. So we help governments to develop the policy of, of post-disaster as well. So for the, how we can distribute trans. So we have like, I, I maybe I can put the name, but in, in some country we work and also help the government to make the policy how we can distribute the trans in the post-disaster. What are the application processes? What are the policy level that you need to implement uh, to get a good uh, post-disaster results in, in, in terms of uh, construction, developing all those uh, damages houses. Uh, so this kind of policy level, we also work on that part as well. So from, from starting to end, we, we build change that usually work on all those parts. Excellent. Yeah, you touched upon the social aspect, which is actually equally important. Uh, I want to focus on technology now. Uh, there are a couple of things that you, you folks mentioned and one of the, like kind of collecting data and all those things. So I want to understand you know, uh, how much software you leverage uh, for this project. And then we'll talk about uh, how much of that is open source. Or, but let's start with the tech aspect of it. Because I'm also sure you're using a lot of IoT devices because if you're collecting a lot of data, you know, seismic data or whatever it is. So let's just focus on uh, what what tech, what is the technology aspect of build change. So in terms of technology, we, we, we work in the field. So from data collection to taking the seismic data. So we doesn't have our own device to collect the seismic, but there are a lot of open source and even government has the seismic data. So we usually coordinate with the government and other organization who has the seismic data for that. And then for data collection, Collection. We also have the in-house app and we also use a lot of like open source, if you know that, the Kobo toolbox is the data collection app. We usually work with Kobo toolbox in field to collect the data and then there is a design. Uh, we also use the Autodex uh, different uh, technology to build design to make a design of the houses and so this kind of technology we use from data collection to the design and the implementation and also, uh, also the, the systems that can send back so uh, the data to, to the field. So what happens is we collect the data and then we send back the results to the field. So in these cycles whatever uh, technology we 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 have and and whatever latest technology we find in the market we usually use and we always be up to date with those technologies so that it can leverage a lot of uh, human effort so yeah we leverage technology in each step uh, of the construction value chain from data collection to information sharing design and then construction monitoring and reporting um, in terms of the specific technologies we as uh, my colleague mentioned we use data collection, open source tools. Uh, also, we have our own uh, platform that we uh, deploy in different projects, depending on where the context. And currently, we're with the support of IBM, we are uh, working on a, an open source project, which uh, is mainly, a con uh, which, uh, which is called Isaac Simo. And it stands for Intelligent Supervision for Construction. And that's the open source tool that we are working on developing. And the goal of that tool 
is to enable uh, access to safe construction practices and quality assurance uh, feedback on uh, various construction elements. So that's, uh, that is still in progress. And now it's been uh, hosted under Linux Foundation. Excellent. That's a perfect segue to my next question, which is, uh, can you talk a bit more about IBM, their call of code, call for code and uh, Isaac Simo project? So call for code challenge uh, is a great opportunity to work on pressing issues uh, that uh, are relevant uh, around the world. And uh, as part of the call for code challenge in 2018, we were one of the finalists in the call for code challenge for disaster preparedness and resilience. And our solution was called PD3R, which stands for Post-Disaster uh, Rapid Response Retrofit. And basically through this, through this challenge, we were able to uh, work on a tool uh, with the goal to basically tackle the challenges faced in post-disaster response uh, via like a rapid assessment tool to determine uh, which houses can or cannot be retrofitted. Uh, and to do so quickly through the help of technology. And building on top of that project, now we're working on this uh, construction supervision and quality assurance tool called Isaac Simo. And uh, yeah, basically that project is about uh, enabling homeowners, builders, and local inspectors with uh, access to safe construction practices and quality checks of some construction elements so i just want to uh add a bit background on this if you if you if you want to so what happens is this tools is built upon a need what happens in if you know that 2015 nepal earthquake was a massive devastating earthquake and while working on that phase with build change we found a lot of problems with actually deploying our engineers to take the the assessment uh, on on the field so it happens is like there is a blockade so there are a lot of problems to do deploy and you also need a massive engineer at once to deploy on all of the sites and to take the the actually current housing assessment so we, we, we need a solution that can leverage that work and we don't have to deploy a lot of engineers. Maybe homeowner even can, can, can be a part of that, that process. So, so we, we, we came up with this solution that calls post-disaster rapid uh, response retrofit, that is pretty three hour solution. And then what happens in that is uh, we, we have like certain uh, criteria of which houses can be retrofit or which houses cannot be retrofit. And depending upon that uh, criteria, we, we model that, uh, we transform that engineering to the machine learning model. And then we generate a model that says that, okay, this house can be retrofitted or this house cannot be retrofit with simple click of images so so this can uh, then leverage a lot of engineer even uh, some some uh, homeowner and whoever in that local community that can access the, the the mobile phone and know how to use the mobile phone with the part of that and in 2018 we had a great opportunity what happens and then uh, we thought that these tools is is because we are not only the the person or the organization that is facing a lot of problem with this kind of need and need this kind of solution that's why we and the, this call for code 2018 was a very great opportunity to make this open source and put them into the people and where a lot of other organization and other, other government agency who wants to use this solution can be also the part of this solution. Excellent. And since you are talking about uh, other people, other organization, and of course, Lakshana, you can also jump in, is that uh, how do you collaborate with other organizations? As you earlier mentioned that, you know, there are a lot of data that you yourself cannot, uh, you know, create, you you know, you get it from others. So can you talk about technologically, how do you work with other uh, either companies, organizations, or projects? We usually work on, on post disaster. So we work on mainly the government organization and give us the solution that, okay, uh, these are the solution we can implement to make the, the retrofit or maybe the new construction what they, they can do after, after post quake. And, and as a part of this tool, we provide this kind of solution and then they usually use these tools. So whoever needs, whoever works with, uh, with our organization, and then we, we usually use this solution to, to collaborate with this organization and then deploy this kind of solution. 
Yeah, so we collaborate with different organizations in uh, depending on the project in and the region. Uh, in the past, we've worked with uh, UNOPS. Uh, we worked with uh, American Red Cross team and uh, so and other organizations. And basically, uh, yeah, so we we train uh, we train the the staff uh, who are in that project, or it really depends on the scope. It's we don't have a generic framework or tools we use to work with different uh, organizations. Uh, we in some cases, it's better to use an existing tool that the organization is already using. And so in that case, we develop um, quality assessments and monitoring uh, systems using those tools. Uh, so it's very context specific. We have talked about Isaac Zima, but I want to get uh, deeper into the weeds. Can you talk about from the, you know, uh, what are the core components of it? So Isaac Simo tool comprises of two components. One is the mobile app, which can be implemented on the field by users to carry out quality check, checks of construction elements by taking pictures of uh, the specific elements and your in construction sites. And we also have another component, which is the web platform, which is a multifunctional um, platform for, uh, for crowdsourcing image data set for future machine learning training. It can be used by uh, the open source developers to add new checks in the project and that can be leveraged uh, in a different context and or they can help modify the existing checks and they can create a multi pipeline of different machine learning models and image processing scripts. So yeah, it's very uh, multifunctional and uh, it can be used to also dynamically update the content of the mobile app. So yeah, these are the core tools that we have developed so far. and um, it's, this is the beginning and we yeah we would like to continue development of more uh, machine learning models and more uh, more quality checks in the future excellent now before we wrap this up I would like to throw uh, the floor open to you folks and uh, to invite uh, uh, other members who can you know join you folks into this initiative and help you with the project sure so we would like to invite uh, the open source community to join our initiative and also we would like to invite them to be a part of this uh, project uh, which is really uh, the target targeted towards uh, basically tackling the challenges of substandard housing conditions so it's a big endeavor so the more people that support us with this uh, initiative uh, the better are our chances to succeed at our in our goal and what the kind of support they can uh, provide us with is uh, some short-term updates. Uh, they can support us with crowdsourcing image data set, which can be uh, used to train future quality check models and also to improve our existing checks. Or they can also support us in the long term by uh, helping develop uh, things like object detection models and also uh, trying to help us tackle some of the challenges of con uh, computer vision uh, related uh, like project, uh, sorry, uh, computer vision related challenges that we are facing in the project. So yeah, these are, there are many uh, ways you can help contribute and you can check out the GitHub link and isaacsimo.net uh, URL to learn more about the project. Nirmal, Lakshana, thank you so much for taking time out today and not only talk about Will Change, but also this project and the efforts that are going on there uh, from the community, from the government sector to, to build safer houses and keep us all safe. Thank you. Thank you, sure, Sapnil. Thank you, Sapnil.